Good morning and welcome to our Holy Saturday service at St. Mark's. I am here in a cemetery in Mountville, close to my in-laws house. And uh, I wanna bring this service to you from this spot because of the nature of our Holy Saturday service. I hope that you are doing well this morning and uh, I pray that this message finds you well and this service as well. We typically do this service with just altar guild and flower guild in the church. Uh, we've had our, our Good Friday service uh, on Friday evening and then on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. we gather to prepare the church, both Flower Guild and Altar Guild, for the festive and wonderful celebration of Easter. This year that is interrupted, that gathering with that lovely group of people that I so look forward to each and every year is interrupted because of our physical separation. But on this day and in the midst of this crisis of all times, the service of Holy Saturday is quite meaningful and I hope that it finds you um, in peace and looking forward to the joy that God has for you. We begin our service. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, creator of heaven and earth, grant that as the crucified body of your dear son was laid in the tomb and rested on this holy Sabbath, so we may await with him the coming of the third day and rise with him to newness of life who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first lesson is a reading from the book of Job offered by Kay Durand. A reading from the book of Job. Job said, A mortal, born of woman, few of days and full of trouble, comes up like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and does not last. Do you fix your eyes on such a one? Do you bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one can. Since their days are determined, and the number of their months is known to you, and you have appointed the bounds that they cannot pass, look away from them and desist, that they may enjoy like laborers their days. For there is hope for a tree, and if it's cut down, then it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease. Though its root grows old in the earth, and its stump dies in the ground, yet at the scent of water it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. But mortals die and are laid low. Humans expire, and where are they? As waters fail from a lake, and a river wastes away and dries up, so mortals lie down and do not rise again until the heavens are no more. They will not awake or be roused out of their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would conceal me until your wrath is past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If mortals die, will they live again? All the days of my service I would wait until my release should come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm of the day is Psalm 130, found on page 3 of your bulletin. Let us say it together. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew and is offered by Mary Lou Dabbs. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, 
which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day, Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Cemeteries have never been bad places for me. I remember going to the cemetery in Rome where my great-grandmother was buried. I remember taking flowers to her grave and walking from where her name was, Willingham, around to the other side, where I saw the name Pruitt. I remember at a young age knowing, this is where my parents will be buried. They were walking beside me, usually my mother and us boys going to visit her people, but sometimes my father when we were trying to tidy up the place and kill ant beds or just driving by on the way home from church on a Sunday, stopping in to pay our respects. There it is, the marble headstone. Willingham on one side with a great-grandfather I never met and a great-grandmother who died when I was 12. And there on the other side, my parents' graves, empty, but waiting. It was never an eerie feeling. It was a feeling of calm. They will die, and this is where they will be. I'm here in another cemetery today. It's in Mountville, right down the road from my in-law's house. I don't know any of the people here, but I have the same sense of calm. There are a thousand, a hundred thousand stories, even in this small cemetery. Stories of loss that are easy to spot. Small graves for children next to larger graves with later dates for their parents. There are stories of loss that were taken into these graves, untold during their time on earth. There are stories of triumph, some etched on the headstones, some again untold. Today, Holy Saturday, we are all at a cemetery, one over in Israel, just outside the city of Jerusalem. We are at a grave, perhaps in a grave. Today is Holy Saturday, and we wait. Yes, we are waiting on Jesus, we are waiting on him to rise, it's all happening tomorrow, Easter day. We are waiting on Jesus to rise, waiting at his tomb, in his tomb. But that's not all. The mystery of God, the mystery of incarnation, is that Jesus is also waiting on us. Jesus is also waiting with us in our tombs. Jesus did not come to earth to perform miracles and get us to believe. Jesus came to earth to save sinners. Jesus came to live with us and to die with us. With us. From beginning to end, world without end. Every baptism, we say words about participating in Christ's death. By participating in his death, we also participate in his rising to life. Death leads to resurrection. It's a miracle. Today, especially today, especially in these hard times, we are up close to the miracle. But we are also right up next to the mystery. We do not only participate in Christ's death, 
but he participates in ours. God in Jesus Christ is participating in our death and causing our resurrection. I can't make sense of it, but music gives voice and feeling to things we cannot make sense of. <clears throat> After my sermon, you'll hear a few verses of and am I born to die? It goes by the tomb Idumea in the Sacred Harp hymnal. You'll hear verses 1 and 4. On your screen or printed at the end of this sermon are the words for all four verses. I can't make sense of it. This mystery of death and grave and God and Jesus. I can't make sense of it and I won't try. On this Holy Saturday, when we are all doing a lot more waiting than we are used to, I will just invite you to remember that you are up close to the mystery. Tomorrow is a whole lot about the miracle, and that can sometimes be hard to feel, hard to believe, and even harder to make sense of, especially at times like this. Today, I will invite you to focus on the mystery of a God who dies, a God who chooses to die with us, not just for us. We wait. We wait at Jesus' tomb. And God waits at ours. Amen. Our service continues with the anthems. In the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who by our sins are justly angered. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitterness of eternal death. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, O Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitterness of eternal death. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitterness of eternal death. Let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Blessings and good day.